All right, hello my friends. There we go. Back on the farm, working on the international harvesters. Not the tractors. We're just messing around with this old pickup we drug out of the trees yesterday. So, as we, so we got the uh, cab all airing out here and uh, working on getting the wheels at least to turn because uh, I don't know how much luck we're going to have getting the engine to turn but we do want to move it so we did very easily get the back wheels to turn uh, I don't really want to say yeah okay I'll say it wasn't in neutral <laughs> so popped it in neutral and uh, of course we got two back wheels turned but the front wheels still no go um, dad was over here working on it so we were beating on this beating on this drum the brake drum beating on the brake drum you know we're not drummers in a band but beating on the brake drum with this big sledgehammer and then uh, trying to spray some lubrication in there and then we just decided to pull the, the hub and the bearing off and then we we're able to move it a little bit and uh, we kept tapping on it, prying on it, tapping on it, prying on it. We got it off, so I have a pretty good feeling that we're going to be able to get this one loose. So that'll be th at least three out of four of the tires that turn. And uh, we'll get on the other side and probably be a similar situation with that one. So at least we'll have it mobile. Uh, we were talking about maybe getting some, there's some old tires laying around out here. But I don't know if we're going to be able to pry them on here, but if we could, that'd be nice at least to have some tires that held there to make it easier to move. Yeah, here's the interior after we cleaned all the all the stuff out of here. It's uh, got a lot of rust, but uh, there's really only one rust hole. And, uh, and unfortunately, the dash is all messed up. These gauges used to be readable. Let's see. They might be able to be cleaned. But I do remember they all worked. But that's the way she goes. Everything is here. You just have to be cleaned up if you were gonna turn it into something. But what a neat looking old truck. I like the two, I like the two old uh, little windows in the back. Looks cool. The bed is pretty solid. This was full of uh, most of this mud here. It's dirt. Looks like good dirt. You can plant some plants with it, but uh, we're storing it in there. So. At this point, we're three out of four tires turning. We'll work on this fourth one, and then uh, I'll come back to you once we're uh, once we're working on the engine. I don't have high hopes on the engine turning over, but we did remove the spark plugs last night before we quit for the day. Sprayed some penetrating oil in there, let it soak overnight. And, uh, we'll see what happens if we get it to turn over easily. I might see if we can't scavenge a battery. This is a six volt system. An old six volt battery in here that I'm sure is dead as can be. It's over 25 years old. Um, but I think the starter would, everything would operate on 12 volts to at least turn it over with the starter. Um, one of the good things is, is that the ignition system on this is very similar to one of the tractors that we got around here. So we may be able to scavenge some tractor parts if we're, if we get to that point. I don't know if we will, but I'm happy it's out of the trees. We're making it mobile. And uh, I can think about it and maybe come back here another time and work on this thing and get it running. So, all right, I'll come back to you in a bit. All right, while we were working on this thing, we just said the heck with it. We had some tires. There were some takeoffs off of one of my dad's cars laying over here. Uh, 15 inch tires, they're a little bit wider. There's one of the old ones. We just decided since we were here, we we're just kind of making it mobile so it'll be easy to get out of the way. So we changed we changed the front tire. Oh, and I removed all the brake shoes out of the uh, inside there, all the brake components. So it's just a, just a brake drum on the front. It's not really too big a deal since it doesn't run. We don't really need brakes, but uh, I wanted to show y'all something kind of interesting on this older truck here. Let me see if I can clean this off. I don't know if you can 
see it on there. Not focusing very well. Turn it this way. On there. I don't know if you can see it on there. There's an L on each one of these studs, which means these are left-handed, left-handed threads. So they're left-hand threads on the driver's side of this wheels. And I guess that's something you see on some older cars. I haven't seen it on all, but um, the left-handed threads on the driver's side because the wheel rotation when you're driving this way. I guess the thought was that if you had a loose lug nut, the wheel rotation would cause the lug nut to go loose. But on a left-handed thread, turn it in counterclockwise. So if you had a loose lug nut, it wouldn't spin off. Now, I guess it's a good thought, but I think a better thought is just to make sure that your lug nuts are tight. <laughs> but it's something interesting, and if you're ever working on an old car, and you're working on the driver's side, and you can't get the wheels off for nothing, take a close look and see if you can see that L. I don't know, if we can, I don't know how well they turned up out in there, but there you go. That one you can see pretty good, right there. L, it's upside down. There's one right side up. L, yep. Left hand thread, driver side. So we're, for no other reason than to make this vehicle a little bit more mobile, because I'm 99% certain it will not be running. <laughs> uh, we're just changing out these rotted out tires. They all held air for a little while, but only one of them held air overnight. Well, that's pretty good luck because we have three used tires sitting over there. So once we get this other passenger side wheel off and break that drum loose so that it's mobile, we're going to change that tire as well. Just because that's what we do out here on the farm. No other reason than to uh, stay busy, learn a little bit of something, and uh, of course make this thing mobile. So we'll get back to you in a little bit. All right, so we got three new used tires put on here for whatever reason. It actually actually makes the thing look a lot better. Let's see if I can get a good shot of it. Yeah, sitting on tires that uh, hold there looks better. And we got uh, three out of four tires turning. This uh, passenger side front the uh, pulled the little cap off, pulled the nut and the bearing, but uh, the drum just doesn't want to come off. I'm beating on it, I broke a little chunk of it off, and not too big of a deal because if this thing ever moves under its own power, which I don't know as if it's going to happen anytime soon, but. If it ever moves under its own power, the drum brakes would be one of the first things that ever got changed out because uh, four-wheel drum brakes, even on a truck with uh, 91 horsepower and whatever this thing weighs, is scary enough. So it would be converted to disc brakes of some sort, I'm sure. And who knows if parts are even available for those drums. Um, it's not a super collectible truck. International Harvester trucks right up until the 80s, I think early 80s, 81, um, but they just aren't that sought after. I've had a couple international scouts, actually one of them that was sitting right where that Volkswagen was, and a friend and I bought one-way tickets up here, and we drug it out of the weeds, kind of like we did with this, uh, this pickup, and we got it running, and we drove it all the way back to San Diego. And that was a hell of a journey. And uh, when we did it, we, we talked about getting this thing out because this has been on there in the trees longer than that scout was. And we talked about it, and we never did it. But I finally got it out at least. And uh, we'll get the wheels turning. And we'll see if the engine turns. And I think that's about as far as I'm going to get on it. The interior dried out quite a bit. I still dug a little bit more stuff out that I didn't see yesterday because it was so awful in there. But I got most of the 
most of the big chunks out. So, we'll uh, see if we can't get this passenger side front wheel turning. And how many just pull it behind the, the truck and, or behind the tractor and pop the clutch to see if the engine turns. Because in order to get the uh, get to the front um, pulley on the crankshaft, you gotta pull the radiator out, and to get the radiator out, you gotta pull the fan out. So I don't see having enough time to do much more than maybe see if the engine turns. So I'll come back at you in a bit when we get the uh, wheel mounted turning and we'll see where we're at. Alright, so we, we did end up getting the uh, brakes off of the other front wheel. You can see why they didn't turn. Water got inside of the brake drum over the years. A little bit at a time, I imagine. And uh, sitting in one place, the brake lining just froze to the brake drum. There's a fair amount of rust in there, you can see. Now, probably could get these things turned and they may still be within limits and you may be able to get parts for these front ends, so. It's hard to say, but uh, for now, we're just gonna go with the setup as it is. So I'll show you the install process if I can get this thing set up. Some legs under her. All right. Now, if you're replacing this, you'd repack this bearing, but uh, this is just going to be to make her mobile. placing these on your car that you're going to drive, but this thing is going to be hooked up in the tractor and towed for a couple feet and see if the engine turns over and that's about as far as it's going to go and then we're going to find a place to park it until we decide what we're going to do with it. I know one of my good friends who would want to come out here with me to try to get this thing running because uh, done crazy stuff like that with me before, so I guarantee if he sees this video, he's going to want to come out here and get this thing running with me, for whatever reason, because we're both a little bit crazy, I think.
right, we got four wheels turning. And we got uh, no front brakes. Not that we did anyway. <laughs> but there's nothing inside of the brakes anymore. But she'll roll now. But won't leave a wake of destruction like we did. All the way back into the tree line. Um, I suggested to my dad that we just fill the cylinders up with oil. And then just... Uh, Hook it behind the tractor and put it in second or third gear and let the clutch out and see if the engine turns. I don't have too high a hopes of it happening, but if it does, that's great. And if it doesn't, then we'll just put the spark plugs back into it. And uh, I might even fog the inside with some oil. Maybe not a bad idea. And then uh, find a good place to set her up. So we'll clean up a little bit and I'll let you know what's next. All right, so the saga of the 55 International, I think, is going to go on hiatus for now. So we uh, hooked it to the tractor to pull it out from where I was sitting. And, uh, I popped the clutch a couple times while we were towing it, and it just skidded. So the engine is pretty well seized on it. Fill the cylinders up with a bunch of penetrating oil and diesel and oil. My dad made a special mix. So we dumped a bunch of that in each cylinder, screwed the spark plugs back in, and um, closed the hood. And pushed it over here where we don't have any big trees with the crazy limbs. Well, I guess that one is the tallest one, but uh, I feel like it's safer here. And I wasn't planning on a whole hell of a lot with it anyway. I mean, I was being hopeful that maybe it would turn over. But uh, it's been sitting for quite some time, over a quarter of a century, on these trees. Minnesota winters. So, I mean, the tires didn't even turn. At least we got four, four tires that turned. Um, cleaned out a bunch of stuff out of it. Put it over here where it's a little bit safer. save her for another adventure day. I have plans. I've always had plans. So I think I took a step in the right direction here by putting it where it's at. And I did take note. It's got a 115 inch wheelbase. So I might do a little comparison shopping and see if there's a modern donor or more modern donor that I could closely match. Upgraded power plant under there. The old six cylinder in there is rated at 91 horsepower. It's got a three speed manual, um, manual single stage brake system. Not the best setup in the world, but it's original. Like I said, though, IH isn't that collectible for people, and this is not a super rare model. So, if I was to find something that I could put that body on, a different frame, chassis, engine, transmission combo, it would make it a really nice driver, which is all you'd really want out of something like that. So she looks nice in there, in the back, tucked in safe and sound, cleaning up now, putting the tools away, calling her a day, I think. Yeah, I gotta clean up this pile of dirt here before we drug it out here. So, from me to you, get out there and find your adventure. Adios.